Hello everyone, I'm slightly annoyed. How are you today? If you haven't noticed, this episode is rather late because Vegas decided to go and eat itself and completely need a complete reinstall. So that not only took time, but because Windows decided to also play games, I also had to redo a part of Idle Master for this week. So everything is now behind. Good job. Great job, amazing. Let's give Vegas and Windows a hand. Okay, now I'm done being frustrated and upset. Let's go. The route down to the theater, which I had thought was only accessible via staircase, is half slope and half stairway and very noisy. I wasn't kidding. Thanks to that, I'm able to descend in my wheelchair without any assistance. As we follow the dimly illuminated passage down, it really feels as though we are crossing to another realm. The air is cool and damp, driving away all thought of the hot weather outside, and the way ahead is shrouded in darkness. Take me with you! Although the path which I am venturing along for the first time feels rather long, I guess it probably doesn't extend that far underground. A door similar to the one we'd entered through appears at the end of it, and I put my hand on the brass knob. Then, so this is the Saint Joseph Theater. That's tiny. Like, real tiny. Like, wow, tiny. They make them that small? Hopefully it's longer than it is. I nod silently in response to Takasaki's whisper as I stare at an underground theater. It's like stepping into a movie set. I don't know if it's fate or what, but the first performance held here was another story from Grimm's Fairy Tales. The story they used was Saint Joseph in the Forest. I suppose the theater under the chapel didn't have such a good ring to it. Nah, I don't think so. I really don't think so. Ugh. Give me a sec. I am actually looking up that fairy tale as we speak. Let me just get a quick look. Uh, not, it's a, mostly just a single book that I've seen. But yeah, it does exist as an actual fairy tale. I don't have a quick telling for you, so hopefully it does. I mean, it's not a long read. It really isn't. So, yeah. I slowly survey the interior of the theater lit only by the dim electric lights. People started to call it the Saint, call it the Saint Joseph as the title of the first performance. I explained the name to them, including that there is a St. Joseph of the Forest Catholic Church in Silver Springs, Florida. Don't know if it's really a fairy tale or not, but it exists. I mean, 
It's something I have for you. Not really sure if it's what you're looking for, but something. The meaning behind the words written on the note is quite simple. It was just saying that the three copies of the script had been taken down to the underground theater. The error mark was to emphasize the need to head underground to the reader in case it hadn't clicked yet. Notice that St. Joseph was in quotes. Three books and then down. I didn't get it either, so don't feel bad if you didn't. <laughs> Who knew there was a place like this here in the Academy? Hey, I only learned this game there's a rabbit hutch here, now I just learned it's a theater. Plus all his irritation dissipates as she looks around the theater, just when we hear a small cry and turn towards the sound. Komikado-senpai? Komikado-senpai? She appears in the desk of the theater like a ghost, the missing scripts clutched in her hand. And the rest of us probably ready to let her have it. Seeing this, Takasaki turns her gaze on me impatiently. It's not what you're thinking. I said there was no culprit, remember? I sent Komikado Senpai on ahead to make sure the scripts were here. They were here, just like you said, Yagaki-san. I don't know who it was that brought them here, but they did it to be helpful. It's almost the day of the performance. I have a feeling. I think I know who did it. And I think you guys all know too. Who has been trying to be helpful? Who brought us into this recitation? Who brought us into this whole mess of this chapter? And then watch me be completely wrong. They must have decided that since we'd be rehearsing, it'd be best to leave them here. Oh, I see. Of course, we'd have to run to it here at least once before the real thing. What do you mean? <coughs> Sister Basque said that these recitations are held twice a year, right? It's our first time, but not the upperclassmen's. Komikado-senpai has already experienced them, so she knew they were held down here. There's a moment's silence, then she looks at me dispassionately. Well, I can't blame her. Yeah, if I showed a note to Komikado Senpai to start with, we probably would have known right away where the scripts were, and this whole mess probably wouldn't have happened. Here, you can put your fo my photo as idiot of the week on the wall. Take your photo now. Go ahead. Since the upperclassmen all know this place's nickname. Nickname? You mean the Saint Joseph? She voices the same very matter of factly. I may have expected it, but I can't stop my shoulders from slumping. So everything we did was... I confirmed that we were indeed making things more difficult and drawn out than they needed to be. And Takasaki's shoulders drooped too. It's not about the destination, it's about the journey! 
We had bonding time! So he mostly squandered at yelling at me saying we shouldn't even bother. But still, it's wonderful that we found the scripts. Yes, it's really great. If you're going to take the scripts from Kogikawa Senpai, then hand me and Takasaki our copies. Thank you for finding them, Erika-san. I'm so grateful. Oh, lay off. I didn't do it for you. She smiles anyway, unperturbed by my curt response. I ruffled my hair, my spirit dampened. Let's accept her thanks. It was for Shirahane's sake that you went looking for them, wasn't it? Although I'm inclined to deny it, when I see Takasaki's eyes aren't irritated, but shining earnestly. Rare side alert! Get your four-star photos in! <sighs> yeah. After a moment of decision, I nod. I see. So it was all for her. Her expression is pensive as I look at her. Her profile seems to blur with that of my explosive-tempered older sister. My family. I left them on such bad terms. You did a good job with the role of the witch. Huh? You said it was just idle play, but it seems to me like you're taking it seriously. Her eyes narrow and she asks me what the heck I'm talking about. I don't know what it is I'm rambling about either. St still, I don't want her to get the wrong idea. I should probably try expressing my feelings more honestly. I don't like doing things half-assed. I want a VIP seat to the very best performance. The expression of bewilderment gradually turns into one of incredulity. Trust you watch. I'll show you the difference between an amateur and a pro. My own day's partner's face is suddenly lit by an innocent girlish smile. Ah, that's cute. I didn't expect that one. Day of the recitation. We've been rehearsing over and over the newly updated scripts. There's no one at the theater yet, but in just a few hours, we'll probably have a full house. A strange mood dominates the St. Joseph Theater. It's like the air is sick with tension or pregnant with idle expectation. The academy as a whole feels like a different world, but here the effect is taken to another level. It's like we suddenly wandered into medieval Europe. Behind me, the theater is lit by hazy yellow light, like when the moon shines through a layer of cloud. Bulbs look like they're in danger of being swallowed up by the encroaching dark. I'm staring at one of them when... It looks weird. I hear a voice from behind me. I stretch my head, I turn around. What? That's a look. No, I'm serious. It looks good on her. Actually cute. Takasaki standing there having changed into her costume for the performance. She's wearing an innocent white dress and there's a flower wreath singing atop her long brown hair. Seeing such a beautiful ghostly white figure floating in the darkness only enhances the otherworldly feeling of this place. There we go. Get your looks in. That might be the end card. I'm surprised how different we look in the same clothes. Like you said, it looks weird on me. 
Although I'm wearing the same outfit as her, I look like a little kid playing dress up. It's more like the clothes are wearing me. Isn't that what most things do? I've already accepted that I look stupid, but Takasaki's brow furrows as though she's disturbed that I share the same opinion. What? You said it yourself. I wasn't. Anyway, you're going to be the sexiest performer out of all of us. Stop joking around. You bet that you think I'm joking? I'll bet you tomorrow's lunch. I figured she'd get pissed off at my banter, but for some reason, she simply turns her head away looking embarrassed. Ooh. Embarrassed as if. You don't look bad yourself. Well, thanks for that. And it's not like I'm sta staring, but she's totally restlessly at the helm of her dress, perhaps because she feels nervous being seen in this costume. Would be out wanting to tell her just go to the bathroom if she needs to. We still have plenty of time left before the performance, but Takasaki's done these things before, so I'd probably just be preaching to the choir. Why are you smiling to yourself? Nothing. Just a lot of an amusingly fitting idiom for a Christian school like this. Takasaki tilts her head at me. Oh my, aren't you two a picture? Who's ready to lose their mind? I hear, I hear a gentle voice behind me, one so familiar that I don't need to turn around to confirm its owner. Koikawa Senpai comes over to us with Shirohane, both of them wearing the same outfits. You look good, Senpai. You think so? <laughs> it's a little embarrassing how short the hemline is, but it's a lovely dress. Yuzuria must be loving it. Didn't you wear the same thing for your previous recitations? No, we wore school uniforms. You look lovely too, Yagaki-san. Thank you. Respond adoratively, even if it's just flattery. I dress my Pokemon buddy who's squirming with embarrassment. You're looking great as well. Those legs of yours drive me wild. I got options for the end card. Not good. Ah, don't say things like that. Perhaps we'll be able to take your eyes off you. i wearing that in the library too. You might get more patrons. Wow. Everyone laughs a lot with me except for Takasaki. I pat her thigh. Yakunayo. I don't need to be jealous, you're still the sexiest. I just realized, you're teasing me. She glares at me, her expression haughty once again. Seems like any anxiety she had has dissipated too. 
Horikawa Senpai watches Takasaki with a smile as she pretends to whack me. Shirahane, meanwhile, whispers to herself. It's such a wonderful theater. I wish I could have shown it to her. She looks around the theater's old-fashioned interior. I think of her myself. I wonder if they talked about a shared love of elaborate architecture like this. I move my chair forward so I'm beside my bookworm buddy who stepped in a little aside from the group. I know I'm the one who proposed that you try to discover the reason she left, but for today, you need to focus on this. That's what I'm about to say, but then I realize how harsh it sounds and stop myself before the words come out. So in my cat-like manner, I address Shirahane, who's now deep in thought. Nervous? You know Shirahane? I should just do it. It's not the end of the world if I mess up, right? She smiles and echoes the words of encouragement I'd given her before the Feast of, Assumption, of the Assumption. I shrug my shoulders and force a smile and return to her somewhat sad one. I'm ending the episode here. Next episode we will go on. But I'll... Hope you had fun, and I'll see you on the next one. And by the way, if it turns out that we are at the end of the chapter and just a five-minute read or something, I might go on to the next chapter right away. So see you then. Uh -huh.